Hello everybody, we are back here on the Hunter Call of the Wild with another episode of the 60 Minute Trophy Challenge. And unfortunately, like what happened in our very first episode of this, my microphone decided to completely screw up, so the entire video sounds very robotic, so I'm unfortunately going to have to talk over the footage, which is definitely not ideal. It's going to take away from a lot of it, but... I mean, it is what it is. At the end of the day, there's nothing I can do to fix it, so we're just going to have to deal with it, but uh, this is uh, kind of what it sounds like for those of you that aren't familiar with this issue that I've ran into a few times in the past, is we spin four weapons that will cover every single class, uh, so yeah, you can't exactly have an entire video sounding like that, so uh, we're just going to go over everything that happened in the episode I guess that's really all there's left to do but basically if you guys are new to the series we spin a wheel for weapons that cover every single class and then after that we spin for a map not including any maps that don't have a lot of servers up or that we have specifically taken off because they usually are uneventful stuff like Hirschfelden and Medved we don't have on the wheel because both of those maps always end up being extremely boring which makes for an unentertaining episode but anyway let's go ahead and show all the different spins so we got a few weapons that we have not really used too often uh, one of them being the 44 Magnum and the uh, compound bow which made it interesting for pretty much anything above class 3 so we were using some guns that I've just never really used for these types of species which made it very interesting and you guys are gonna see why it was really interesting the further we get along in this episode but after we went ahead and spun for all of the different weapons we went ahead and did a spin for the reserve and ended up getting, as you guys can see, Verhonga Savannah, which we have only got once in this series, and the one time we did get it, we managed to find a Diamond Kudus, so it ended up turning out pretty well for the most part. After we rolled for everything, we jumped into the game, and unfortunately it took us half an hour to find a good server that was actually worth staying on which is I think by far one of the longest amount of times it has taken us to actually find a decent server in one of these episodes but when we did finally get into a good server man it was insane we had a little bit of issues at first running into a couple uh bugged Cape Buffalo and then after we ran into those I left that server joined this one and man it was just good stuff everywhere one of the things that immediately helped me know that this was a good server was the fact that the host was level 2 and that usually means that they have not hunted any of their map at level 2 you really can't do a lot of hunting before you reach that level so that meant that this map was virtually untouched and it really showed just based off of the stuff that we were finding uh, just the sheer number of high-end trophies was just off the charts like more than I've seen in quite a while for like one specific species which uh, on this one it just happened to be the Gemsbok that was giving us just insane amounts of high level animals and a couple of these Gemsbok that we ended up finding in these herds were pretty much guaranteed diamonds because when you look at them a lot of the times you can tell just based off of the thickness of the horns and this guy right here was actually a guaranteed diamond as you can see by the score estimate of 339 at the very minimum. So the second I spotted this guy I just knew that we had already completed the challenge with 15 minutes left which was such a nice thing to see because of the fact that we've had some trouble completing the 60 minute trophy challenge in quite a few of the episodes. I think we've failed more than we've completed so seeing one that's a guaranteed diamond was really really nice now it didn't take long for us to get up close to this guy and be able to take a shot on him so that was another thing that was pretty fortunate for us because sometimes it can take quite a while to get close with a handgun but once we got him in our sights we lined up and took the shot on him for a perfect double lung and I think liver too but he died off a lot faster than I was expecting from a 44 magnum it's typically not the strongest caliber on class 8 animals but it actually did okay on the Gemsbok 
And then right here, we're actually looking at another one of the herds that had a pretty decent sized level 4 that we will end up taking a shot on later in the video. But now that that level 4 is down, let's go straight up to it and see what it ended up scoring. And this right here is what I mean by being able to immediately tell that it's a diamond. Just look at the thickness on those horns of that 350 scoring diamond. It's honestly a huge difference between the ones that make it and the ones that don't make it for level 4 Gemsbok. You immediately can tell the difference because these are much thicker and getting a 350 scoring level 4 is a really nice thing to see. Especially in a challenge like this where we've had so many failures in the past as I was saying earlier. It was nice to finally get a guaranteed diamond in our sights. And man, this was an awesome one to do it with. It wasn't quite into that max weight estimate, so it was probably, I would imagine, really close. Like, it probably would have scored really high if it had been like 2 kgs more in weight. But now that we had took that guy out, we got lined up on this second level 4 Gemsbok. Now this is one that has the thinner horns, which you can't really see too well from uh, the little look that I did give you guys of him, but this one did have much thinner horns, and so therefore, I was pretty convinced that it wasn't going to make it, and unfortunately that shot that we took there did not hit vitals, I'm pretty sure that it was a little bit high. Uh, we were taking the shot from about 120 meters and the max zeroing distance of the 44 is 75 meters so it was a bit of a risky shot didn't quite pan out but i mean it is what it is wasn't that big of a deal since that one was not a guaranteed diamond and i don't even think it had a chance of making it but the one that we're looking at now does have a chance of making it and it is the thicker horns so we needed to get this guy to stop Took a shot with the 22, got him to stop moving, and then we went up to get a little bit closer. We ended up fast traveling to the lodge again so that we could get a better angle to move up on these guys, and it actually worked out in our favor quite well. I feel like if I would have attacked them from the angle that we were at previously, it would not have gone as well as it did because this put us in a really good spot for the most part. And after a little bit of stocking up, we finally got to within 150 meters of her. They were all nervous, so they were very skittish, unfortunately. And it was a bit of a challenge to get close, but luckily they kept coming back to this feed zone even if we did end up spooking them, so it all worked out in the end. And really, you can't ask for too much more, especially on multiplayer, where calls don't always work and animals don't always return to their need zones. Right here I tried to get its attention and accidentally ended up making it going alarmed and spooking off. So that was my mistake right there. There's uh, unfortunately not much else that I could have tried to get it to go alert. If I fired off the 22 at that close of range there was a chance that it would have spooked off and running up on a multiplayer server is always a risk because sometimes lag will affect you and make it so they spook even though it says that they're just alert or alarmed. It's kind of a strange thing in multiplayer, but I mean, unfortunately it spooked off. Not much we can do there except move on and it didn't take long before it came back. They started moving back into their zone very shortly after I spooked them off, but the level 4 was taking its sweet time. I swear it must have been the last one to get back to this zone. Literally everything else got here before it did, and I'm assuming that has to do with its size somewhat because in Call of the Wild a lot of the times the higher level or larger animals are a little bit more skittish and take longer to get back to their zone so I'm guessing that that's probably what happened in this scenario but there she is finally coming over the hill and man it was nice to see her because that is such a beautiful Gemsbok and as you guys can see the closer we got to her just the more it was apparent that it was a giant and as you can see, somebody got on their ATV, so that was why they had actually spooked off before, which I didn't realize. I thought that um, I was the one that spooked them off, but now that I'm looking at this footage again, I think it was actually that ATV that spooked them off, which makes a little bit more sense because I could have swore that it just went to alarmed. After a couple minutes of trying to get it to go broadside, we finally managed to get it to do so and got a perfect shot off into the lungs. And at first I was a little bit worried that we might have shot it as it turned a little bit, but thankfully we didn't mess it up. We ended up getting a perfect double lung shot and got a beautiful Gemsbok trophy down. 
But I'd say if there's anything that shows that low level servers in multiplayer are amazing, this is the type of thing that shows that because this was two diamond Gemsbok very close to each other. They weren't in the same herd, they were in two separate ones, but just the proximity of them was so close that it was almost as if they were in the same herd. And this is one of the reasons that I love hunting Gemsbok on low level servers, because there's almost always at least one diamond. And it honestly goes the same for uh, Cape Buffalo, I've noticed. If you get on a low level server and hunt Cape Buffalo, there's almost always a diamond one, which is usually an awesome thing to see. But anyway guys, we are going to go ahead and end it there. We didn't have anything to go into the main lodge, so we're not going to show anything off in the trophy lodge. But I appreciate everybody stopping by the video. This was a little bit shorter than normal because of the fact that things screwed up. But I hope you guys still enjoyed it. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, click the like button, and ring that notification bell so that you guys will never miss a video. Also, be sure to comment down below with your favorite part of this video. Uh, what challenge you like the best out of all the ones that I do, which you would like me to do next, uh, if there's any brand new challenges you think I should try, or, well, anything in between. But with that being said, thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace!